Hello, in this lecture we'll discuss partnerships and adding a new partner. Objectives, we will be able to describe the process of adding a new partner to a partnership, create the journal entries to record the entry of a new partner to a partnership, define the effect of the journal entry to add a new partner on the trial balance accounts, as well as explain the effect on capital accounts of adding a new partner to a partnership. A variation of the same problem, same exact thing, it's going to be very similar except for now we're going to bring the new partner R on the books, same 25% interest that the partnership has agreed. The partnership and the new partner have agreed on this in a market environment, but the new partner is going to be on the books and give the partnership the 270000 So now the agreement is that the partnership will give a 25% interest in the partnership in exchange for uh, the new partner R giving the partnership 270000 So let's see what the journal entry would look like. Same process, I'm going to talk about the, the journal entry until we hit kind of a problem and then go through our worksheet to see if we can figure out and fix the problem. So first of all, of course, the question that we always have is the uh, cash affected in this journal entry of bringing the new partner in. And of course, yes, the cash is going to be affected. We're going to receive 270000 in the partnership. Therefore, cash is a debit balance. We're going to make cash go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So we know that's going to be part of the journal entry. We can put that, lay that out in the front, right up front. We also know that the new partner is going to be, be entering the partnership. So the new partner put in 270000 You would think that, of course, we would credit the new partner for the investment, just like when we create uh, an investment or any time an investment happens. You would think we would credit our capital account, which we will. However, we will not credit necessarily for 270 In this case, we're going to credit for 2025 why that's that's going to be the question well why are we going to do that how are we going to come up with that let's do our worksheet in order to answer that question so what we have here is our 30 20 50 we won't go over calculating those ratios again that's of course the 3 to 5 ratio and we have our capital accounts balances which will be just these balances here so we've laid these balances out in terms of a table now for the three existing partners before the new partner enters Note the capital account balance of 540 is equal to the book value of the company being the assets minus the liabilities. Assets minus liabilities, 540. That's the book value of the company that is allocated to the partners in this uh, way. And note again that the, the reason we can do this is because we have closed out the revenue and expenses. So this is a post-closing trial balance. This is basically balance sheet accounts that we're looking at. So then... The new partner comes on the books and it's going to give the partnership 270000 Therefore, the book value, the cash is going to go up, the assets are going to go up by 270, and the assets minus liabilities then will be at 810000 Th That means that our new capital accounts at the end of the day after the transaction has happened needs to be at 810000 We said that the new partner was going to get a 25% interest of that, Therefore, if we take that 810 times 25%, that's the agreement that we have. The new partner is going to be on the books for the 202,000. So that's where this number is coming from. So now, uh, we the, the new partner gave the partnership 270. We're putting the new partner on the books at 2025. And you might be asking, well, why would the new partner agree to these terms? Why would the new partner, I mean, if the assets minus the liabilities equals the value in the, in the company, and the new partner is only going to receive 2025 of value in the company, why would the new partner then give the company or the partnership uh, 270000 And the reason for that might be, well, uh, there could be some intangible assets on the books, or maybe the, the books are not valued uh, exactly at fair market value as is perceived by the individuals in the transaction. So maybe the, the current partnership has a good name and has good uh, intangible assets being goodwill or something like that that will uh, ha will generate future revenue. And therefore, the new partner, partner R, may be willing to pay more than what is being allocated to them through the agreement. So once again, this, these things will, will rarely match. They could match, that would be a very easy journal entry to make, but more often than not, they won't, and the agreement will be uh, something that will have to differ in this way. Now, of course, the difference being that the debits are greater than the credits, 
we're going to have to add some credits here. How are we going to add the credits? Who's going to uh, receive the credits? Well, this time, M, B, and L are going to receive an increase in their capital accounts because uh, they received more cash than they're allocating to the new partner. So that means that we have this 67.5 difference. So if we look at the calculation here, what is happening is that we, we, the new partner is receiving 270,000 in cash and they're giving R a 2025. Therefore, we have this 67.5 that we need to allocate to M, B, and L in accordance with their profit sharing ratios. So we get the 67.5, we're going to multiply times, times 0.330%. That gives us the uh, 20,002 right there. And then we're going to do the same thing here. So we've got the uh, 67.5 times B's capital account, 0.2 profit sharing, gives us the 13.5 there. And we'll do this one more time. And we have L. So we've got the 67.5 times 0.5 for L. And that would be the 33,750. Therefore, this 67,5 will be allocated to M, B, and L at 20,250, 135, and 33,750, respectively. If we take a look at the transaction, then our trial balance over here, we need to then increase the account balances like so. So we will go up. Obviously, R is going to be on the books for the amount allocated to R, that 270. Uh, that w I'm sorry, the 2025 that we're putting R on the books for, and then we are going to increase the capital account balance from 151.2 plus uh, the 20,000 in this case to the 171,450. We're increasing the capital account balances. In terms of a journal entry, then to increase the credit balance, we will then credit, which of course is also the plug that we need in order to make this reconcile. So there's the 2250, the 135, the 33,750 to MB and L respectively, which will increase their capital accounts. Let's see what that would look like in terms of the trial balance. So here's that same journal entry. Here's that same worksheet. Let's see if it does what we expect it to do when we post it to our worksheet here. What do we expect it to do? We expect R, M, B, and L's capital accounts to be 2025, 171, 450, 3, 137, 7, and 298, 350 after we post the journal entry respectively. So here's the cash. Cash is going up. Cash is a debit balance. We're making it go up in the debit direction. So it goes from 550 to 820. Then we post ours capital account. So here's the new partner going from zero, of course, up in the credit direction by 202500. The company now, in essence, kind of like owes R the 202500. And then uh, M's capital account is going to go up in the credit direction, so it's a credit, we're doing the same thing to it, increasing the capital account from 551, 200 up by 20,250 to 171, 450. Then we've got B's capital account here, so B has a credit balance of 124, 2. We're doing the same thing to it, being a credit of 13.5, increasing the capital account to the 137, 700. And then L's capital account balance has a credit balance. We are going to do the same thing to it. Increasing that capital account balance from 264.6 by 33.750 to the nine or the 298.350. Now, of course, the assets, the cash, minus the liabilities, accounts payable, will equal our new uh, capital account balances, which will then add up to the 810. So we are now able to describe the process of adding a new partner to the partnership, create the journal entries to record the entry of a new partner to a partnership, define the effect of journal entry to add a new partner on the trial balance accounts, and explain the effect on the capital accounts of adding a new partner to a partnership. <laughs>